Let's take a moment to just cover the endpoint architecture. So when we look at Cisco AMP for endpoints, there's also Cisco AMP for networks. That's where we deploy the AMP intelligence uh, and connect it into firewalls, IPSs, the Meraki MX unified threat management, as well as branch routers. Uh, when we talk about AMP for endpoints, which is our focus for the moment, that's where we're gonna take a look at leveraging AMP on, well, you guessed it, endpoints. The endpoints include Windows, uh, Linux, primarily support for Red Hat and CentOS, uh, Android, and then there's even some support for uh, Mac iOS-based devices uh, through the impl implementation of an agent called Clarity. Uh, Clarity also ties you into the umbrella components. Additionally, we can tie in what we call AMP for content by leveraging the AMP engine on top of solutions such as the ESA and the WSA. All these components are gonna give us the capability to tie either endpoints or network devices into ThreatGrid as well as Cisco's AMP cloud-based services and solutions. As we work through this section, we'll take a look at some of the things that Cisco has to offer within the cloud. So when we look at setting up Cisco AMP for endpoints, what we're, what we're basically doing is installing an agent that we call a connector uh, onto the endpoint. So if we've got, again, Windows, Linux, OS X endpoint, we apply the connector that's appropriate for that operating system, and that's gonna give us the ability to look at files, look at processes, look at procedures on that local file system or local device, and we can intercept suspicious calls, which is gonna be fantastic. We've got the ability to do um, some really intelligent analysis of the content that we're looking at, of those actual files. Whenever we see files, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and calculate a SHA-256 hash, punt that to the cloud, the cloud will do a comparison and tell us, is that file good or bad? If it doesn't know, we can integrate, uh, and that's what you see here going from AMP Cloud to ThreatGrid. ThreatGrid is Cisco's um, sandbox solution, which if you're not familiar with the sandbox, gives us the ability to take an unknown piece of software, run, you, run it inside of a simulated environment. And that environment is so smart and so clever, it's trying to hide the fact that some debugging is going on and some deep analysis of memory is happening and they're playing you know, tricks with the time and date and memory to try to trigger logic bombs. And we're trying to analyze this malware and not let it know that it's been analyzed. Why? Because malware can be self-defending. So if we can trick the malware into trying to do something that's malicious, if we can detect that, we can then create a signature. The signature not only goes out to the impacted customer, but again, it's gonna update our database within the AMP cloud, and that'll be leveraged to protect all of Cisco's other customers. So this is just kind of a, a illustration of that occurring. Here's the AMP connector, which is basically an agent that runs on the endpoint. What does it do? Just SHA-256 hashes. Once you have that hash, you punt it to the cloud. If appropriate, we can define this within our policies. For unknown files, we can upload the file to the cloud for analysis. Now, if you want to do this, you can. If you don't want to do it, you don't have to. You can take it out of the policy so that this doesn't happen automatically. And if you prefer, you can manually fig, you know, handle or process uh, which files are going to be uploaded to ThreatGrid uh, and which ones are not. Again, when things get passed to AMP, AMP is going to pass them back to ThreatGrid. ThreatGrid is going to cast a verdict. That verdict comes back to the AMP cloud, which again, we're looking at this from the perspective as us being the only customers in the world, but really the intelligence comes from the fact that Cisco is doing this across so many customers around the globe. So if any of them are attacked with a malicious attack that's new, as soon as we detect the way that that works, we're going to rate it, score it, identify it, and share that identification with all the other customers. Looking at the AMP for Endpoints use case, you know, where does it live within your organization? It varies, you know. There are cloud-based deployments, which are right for most companies, but if you have companies that are more sensitive with the data that they pass, or maybe they can't pass data in and out of a particular geographic region uh, or physical facility, there's also uh, an on-cloud solution. So see how we've got this data center fabric all the way to the left? It wouldn't be impossible for you to have a private service here that maybe we host within the data center, but that's not gonna be what's most common. What's most common is it exists in the cloud, there's all of your definitions, and then as far as the connectors, the connectors are installed on agents that are either in the campus LAN, working from home, off at partner sites, wherever they go, that agent is running. 
Again, it connects back through the cloud uh, to AMP. It can get the latest policies from there. It can get updated versions of the connector from there. And of course, you can have that dialogue about uh, the SHA hashes and you know, are these files actually malicious that we're looking at.